Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing a lovely A Series 1998 Early Vendome Panerai Luminor Marina PAM001. This was the beginning of the modern Richemont owned Panerai, but it has plenty of the DNA as well as the physical substance of the the Officine Panerai watch is made before the arrival of Cartier. Now the timepiece is graceful and classical. Three hands, no date, Luminor Marina, the Alessandro Bettarini case in 44 millimeters, polished stainless steel. You can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the original oversized sports watch was also a remarkably good ergonomic match, even for a small wrist, 53.3 millimeters from lug to lug, but you can see how minimal, short cropped and tightly downturned the lugs are. The watch has no trouble fitting on my wrist. And I can actually endorse it for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. It's not thick at 14.1 millimeters thick. You have to remember that this is a solid case back manual wind watch, so it's a lot thinner than you might expect. Remember, solid case backs are always thinner. The timepiece sits low enough that with its generously sloped conical bezel, it could slide underneath the dress cuff and the spacing between the lugs. Panaristi, you already know, but for everyone else, the Betterini case in 44 millimeters is a 24 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Alessandro Andrew Bettarini was a machinist and prototypist who helped to establish the form of the original three civilian Panerai watches that were launched back on the Durand de la Pen Italian Navy warship in 1993. They were the Luminor, the Luminor Marina, and the Mare Nostrum Chronograph. And this watch is the very spitting image of the Luminor Marina. Simple, polished, stainless steel, the Bettarini case that has a little bit of a tuna can profile, and a substantial factory officine Panerai strap calfskin. You can see calfskin on the bottom calfskin on the top, black, there is a sheer side showing the layers of construction with a monotone stitch, and a simple oversized Panerai polished steel pin buckle. This is the kind of thing I need to tell you because you can't see the accessories, boxes, or collected set of a watch in a video review, but everything that came with this watch is still with it, right down to the original warranty documentation, the strap changing tools, the box, the packaging for the box, and the chronometer card. And this watch is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, as underneath this case back, and you can see it is indeed an A-series, is a Panerai Caliber OP2 based on the Unitas 64972, 17 joules, manual wind, 21.6 beat rate, 56 hour power Power reserve, and it does have that COSC chronometer certification, all of that water resistant down to 300 meters, so a seriously water resistant watch. The timepiece featuring the classic device protecting the crown, a design of Panerai in the late 1940s that was patented and remains unique to the brand. It offers more protection than a conventional shouldered crown guard, and the locking lever merely compresses and decompresses a donut shaped seal inboard of the crown, so it doesn't thread through its seals. It's a more durable system if you must repeatedly lock and unlock to set and wind the watch than if it were a screw down crown that would quickly wear out its seal system. It also makes it harder to accidentally jump in the water while your watch is unlocked, as that's a hell of a lot more obvious than a few threads out with a screw down. Now it also allows you to quickly and easily wind the watch without having to thread it out at all, and because the locking lever is substantial and easy to catch, even with wet, sweaty, or gloved hands, it makes sense on a sports watch to use this arrangement rather than a conventional screw-down crown. It's simply easier to manipulate, visually more distinctive, offers more protection, and preserves the seal of the watch. It's also absolutely iconic. Do you know what watch that is? Of course you do. It has an iconic profile. Few watches can claim the same, and that includes Rolex. The dial is original tritium, and that is both hands and the dial base. A lovely Panerai sandwich style dial. This is one of the fat sandwiches. As you can see, the loom itself is actually squeezing through the apertures in the dial. It's matte black to reduce glare. I've tested this watch, and both hands and the dial are absolutely dead. This is what Fotina wants to be in its wildest dreams. As all of the fade you see here, is both even and authentic. The nice thing about it is there's also no crumbling. There are no marks from the tools of unqualified watchmakers. There's no oxidation or damage to the dial. The dial base itself looks brand new. It's only the loom and the tri-arabics and the indices that have aged. A handsome and evocative Panerai watch, if you want just one that embodies the absolute best of the brand in the modern era and takes you back to the early days when unsponsored use of these watches by the likes of Sly and Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwartz 
Schwarzenegger, built the brand better than Richemont ever could, taking yourself back to the early days of Panoristi.com and the forum culture and the strap swapping. And by the way, the straps here are swapped in traditional fashion using screwdrivers, no spring bars. Take yourself back with the Panerai Luminor Marina PAM001.